a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another book review today, so uh, cheers. Oh, that is some good, good beer. Today I'm bringing you a review of Funland by Richard Lehman. Now, Richard Lehman was one of the first horror authors that I ever got into, uh, thanks to my mother, actually, who borrowed Darkness Tell Us from the Katoomba Library and started reading it, didn't enjoy it, and asked me if I wanted to read it, which I did, and I loved it, and became a fan of Richard Lehman. He is not the best writer, and I don't say that in a negative way at all. Um, a lot of his novels, the stories are just fantastic, but the writing style and the writing itself is, for want of a better term, uh, quite basic. I owned a copy of Funland. Um, this exact copy, actually, back in the day, I picked up a second-hand uh, copy of it at a bookstore from Springwood. And um, I got it just because it was Richard Lehman and I was a fan of his work. I read the back of the book and thought, that doesn't sound very fun. And actually never read it at all. This was the first time reading Funland for me. Um, my reading sensibilities have kind of grown uh, a bit. I can kind of understand uh, different aspects of writing now. I teach it a lot at uh, university. So reading it now for the first time was I impressed? Uh, was a, a young me kind of giving it shit for what it was? Uh, no, this, this book was pretty fucking bad. Not only was it bad as a horror novel, it was bad as a Richard Lehman novel. That is not to say there aren't aspects of it that are good. There are. I enjoyed it. I really did. It was a ton of fun to read. But would I recommend Funland to anybody? Probably not. There are better books out there to read, to experience, to enjoy. For what it is, though, I kind of get it. Uh, it would actually be quite a compelling TV show or movie for like two hours as a novel as a Richard Lehman novel no it just doesn't work on the level that you want a Richard Lehman novel to work on he does things very well he does characterization very well in this um, and the scenes that are kind of graphic horror he does very well unfortunately there are too many characters, there are too many stories, and there is not enough graphic horror for it to be considered a Richard Lehman classic. It's a good book, do not get me wrong, I am not shitting on this thing in any way, shape or form, I'm just saying there are better books out there. So with that said, let's go into a spoiler-filled review of Funland by Richard Lehman in the next episode of Read a fucking book. 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 People. Okay. So you can probably tell from the title and the fantastic cover. I'm a huge fan of these old Richard Lehman covers. The new ones, you know, not so much. The book is set 
not so much a, uh, at an amusement park, but kind of like a Coney Island style boardwalk at this small town called Belita Bay. Now, Belita Bay has a huge problem, and that is homeless people. Homeless people come here, they um, camp out on the beach, they wander the boardwalk, they annoy uh, the citizens, they annoy the tourists, and that is the big problem that Belita Bay has. The teenagers in Belita Bay refer to these homeless people as trolls and they are trollers and what they do is they go and harass the trolls at night they run them out of town they torture them they harass them it's a whole kind of big thing that is the basic premise of the book it's teenagers out of control against homeless people who are you know, pretty much just that. They're homeless, they're indigent, they have nothing, they're trying to get somewhere in life. The problem with Funland is the amount of characters that Richard Lehman introduces. We have Jeremy. He is the new kid in town. He and his mother have just moved here. He doesn't have any friends and um, he makes friends with this kid called Cowboy, who is one of the trollers. So Jeremy is now introduced into this cycle of violence with the trollers against the homeless people. We have um, Joan and Dave. They are two police officers. Dave is dating the um, reporter from the newspaper called Gloria. But he is secretly in love with Joan. Joan is in love with him. Gloria is trying to out the trollers uh, through newspaper articles. So we have that kind of story going on, this love triangle thing happening. Within the trollers, we have Tanya and Nate. They are Tanya's the one who's like the head of the trollers. The reason being she's a lifeguard on the beach who was attacked and raped by some homeless people and hence she has kind of gathered this group together. Nate is her boyfriend. Nate basically um, has... Her, his family owns most of the boardwalk with the amusement park rides and, and food trucks and all that kind of shit going on. So we have that story going on. We have... Nate falling in love with Robin. Robin is a homeless person. She's run away from home, but she's a banjo player who plays on the boardwalk of Funland. And so Nate and Robin kind of have a relationship. Uh, Nate and Tanya have a relationship. Dave and Joan have a relationship. Gloria has gone undercover as a homeless person. She's broken up with Dave, but... Dave and uh, Joan feel responsible. Jeremy, the, the kid that we're introduced to, forms a relationship with one of the gang members, Shiner, uh, although he's in love with Tanya. And then uh, we find out that Shiner is Joan's sister. And you know what? It just goes on and on and on with this fucking bullshit. At the same time, uh, the, uh, there's this guy called Jasper who owns the oddities kind of museum on the boardwalk, but he also has the fun house that's been closed down and he has kind of been taking these indigent people in and they've been killing people and doing it for fun or whatever. We never really fucking find out. But as you can see from my brief description right there, what the fuck is going on? No one fucking knows. That's the problem with Funland. The problem is there are too many stories happening at the same time. And, and they all interweave within the span of a few fucking days. You've got people falling in love within a day of meeting each other. 
The dialogue is shit. The sex scenes are typical Richard Lehman sex scenes. You know, whatever. Ultimately, uh, let's go through the plot. So, Jeremy comes to Bolita Bay, meets up with Cowboy, becomes a troller, realizing what's going on with the homeless people. Uh, sees Tanya, the leader of the trollers, falls in love with her. At the same time, he meets Shiner. And um, he and Shiner kind of form a connection, but he's kind of drawn to Tanya. The group um, take this homeless man who has, in the interim, uh, met up with Robin, the banjo player that Nate ultimately falls in love with. Um, he's stolen her money, and they they take him and handcuff him to the Ferris wheel. Nate, his family owns a Ferris wheel, kind of gets it going, but because this homeless guy is so fat, he falls and dies. So the trolls have actually killed someone, and they try to cover it up by taking his body out into the ocean. Nate and Shiner realize this has gone too far. Jeremy is kind of on the cusp of things. At the same time, Dave and his girlfriend Gloria, who's the newspaper reporter, um, have this kind of breakup, so to speak. Dave realizes he's in love with his partner, Joan. So that all kind of comes to a head. Uh, the kids kind of go out for another troll. Uh, Tanya realizes that Nate is in love with this banjo player, so she ambushes them um, with Jeremy, who should have been with Shiner, but he's obsessed with Tanya. And they take, they they leave uh, Nate handcuffed to the bed, and they take Tanya to Funland, where they do their trolling. And then everything comes to a head when all the kids are kind of stuck in this fun house, and they start to die because Jasper is this psycho guy who has set up these traps in this abandoned funhouse and blah 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 ultimately no one really fucking cares I'm really diluting this down but the point is there's nothing else to talk about with this book as a horror novel it sucks the horror comes in the last like 30 pages as a thriller it sucks there's nothing thrilling about it this reads like a young adult Christopher Pike novel to be perfectly honest with you which is so beneath Richard Lehman um, it's not funny Richard Lehman wrote some fantastic horror novels like Flesh The Woods Are Dark the the uh, Beast House, The Cellar, Quake, Endless Night. These are books that are fucking enjoyable. They are fun. They are gritty. They keep you kind of on the edge of your seat. This one actually did nothing for me at all, um, which I hate to say. I have watched quite a few book reviews of Funland because I was wondering, am I in the minority here? A lot of people talk about how he portrays homeless people in this. I mean, if you're fucking going into a Richard Lehman novel and you're looking at, well, did he depict social issues properly? You're reading the wrong fucking book, buddy. That's all I got to say about that. Um, would I recommend this one? If you're a fan of Richard Lehman, yes. Uh, otherwise... There are better Richard Lehman novels out there, um, is all I'm saying. Did I enjoy it? Sadly, yeah, I did. <laughs> I had a really good time with this, but it's only because I love Richard Lehman and I didn't read it in my Richard Lehman collecting days. I'm glad I managed to get a copy of the older version as opposed to the new ones that have the shit covers. Uh, so that was... Richard Lehman, Funland. Yes. Okay, if you enjoyed the video, 
like, subscribe, leave a comment, do all that other fucking stuff. You know what? We really don't care. Share it with your friends. You know they're going to fucking love the channel. We've got other stuff coming up. We've got uh, a couple of Kickstarters in the works. So uh, look out for that. And most importantly, of course, stay safe. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Please read a fucking book, people.